This is February 10, 2011. We are in Natick, Massachusetts. And this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan. Our cameraman is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus. We are privileged to have with us today Catherine Kit Simons. <laughs> Welcome, Kit. Thank you. May I ask when you were born? In South Boston, Massachusetts. And when were you born? 1923. And I understand you were born in South Boston. Uh huh. Okay. And what is your current address? It's in Natick, Massachusetts. Your marital status? I'm a widow. Do you have children? Three daughters. Where and when did you enter the military? In Waltham, Massachusetts. What were you doing at the time? I was working in an office at the time that I decided to join. All right, before we go into you joining the military, let's talk about what Waltham was like in the early 1940s. Uh, do you remember what happened at Pearl Harbor? How did you hear about Pearl Harbor? I heard it on the radio. When I was coming home, there was a car nearby, and it was on, the radio was on loud, and I heard about it. And I was appalled, but then it passed because I was young and it didn't, you know, register mm -hmm. quite as it should have. But mm -hmm. and you were would have been about eighteen at the time. I was eighteen, you were right? Eighteen, mm -hmm. and you were uh, were you still in high school or were you? No, out? I was working then. Okay, and what did you do for work? Office work, yeah, just clerical work. Mm -hmm. Did your family take part in victory gardens or blackouts? No, no, no. And nothing but rationing? See, I can't remember that. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Of course, I went in the service quite soon, I think. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't either. Let's mm -hmm. see. Now, when did you join um, the military? Well, as I'm trying to remember, dear, I believe I was 21 at the time. Uh, so that would have been 1944? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. And why did you join at the time? Well, I guess I just wanted a little excitement. Mm -hmm. And that's why I joined. I'm sorry it wasn't, you know, patriotic or anything. <laughs> that's quite all right. What branch did you join? U.S. Navy. And why did you choose that branch? I just liked it, that's all. Just I read up on the different branches and I liked the sound of that better. All right. Did family or friends join the service when you did? And my brother was in World War II, mm -hmm. but he was overseas. And what branch was he in? He was in the Army. And he got through okay? Hmm? Did he make it through the war okay? Yeah, he came home. He was a young man. He had snow white hair, but it came back to its natural color. Amazing. Uh huh. Okay, where were you sent for basic training? Uh, first, we went to uh, the Bronx, mm -hmm. and we went to um, Hunter College. That's where we did our studying mm -hmm. and training. And what did you study at Hunter College? Do you remember? All about the ships, mostly about ships. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I couldn't tell you now what. <laughs> And you, uh, what, was, uh, what was the best part about basic training? The basic training wasn't that interesting. It was after we got on bases that we enjoyed it because we had camaraderie there and, and the, everyone was so tense at basic training, you see. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any stories about basic training? Anything that comes to mind? Yes, I made a faux pas. I was walking along the street, and a woman asked me a question. I didn't know we weren't supposed to talk to civilians. Mm -hmm. And so I got some detentions for that. But they, see, they treated everyone, they might be spies. And she was asking questions, and I didn't answer them, though. Mm -hmm. And where, uh, where were you sent after basic training? Basic training, I went to Milledgeville, Georgia, for further schooling. And where, where was this uh, Milledgeville in Georgia? Uh, was it uh, by Atlanta, Savannah? It was a, a college, yeah, the college mm -hmm. dormitories we lived in. Okay. 
And what did you study in Georgia? In Georgia, we were uh, studying uh, all sorts of branches, like uh, bookkeeping and all the mostly clerical things. Mm -hmm. Did you like the studies? Not particularly, no. I just <laughs> loved the atmosphere there, though. Mm -hmm. Did you receive advanced or specialized training beyond basic? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Uh, Did you receive any advanced or specialized training beyond basic? No, yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, where was your first duty station? In Key West, Florida. And what did you do down in Key West? Again, uh, uh, mostly I was assigned to find housing for the boys who were coming in with their families. Mm -hmm. And so I was connected with the City Hall in Key West. Mm -hmm. And I'd go down there and, you know, question them and ask them if they had any housing for our boys. That was mostly my job. All right. And what rank did you have? Well, I didn't get up. I was yeoman, mm -hmm. and the war ended before I took the next step. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about Key West at that time. Key West was fascinating. You know, it used to be the uh, hideout for the movie stars. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very quaint. Mm -hmm. And, but there was, no, I can't say that. I'll say that. Uh, that we had, we were limited as to whom we could, you know, associate with. So we had to be very careful about that. Mm -hmm. uh, Have you been back at Key West since the war? My daughter took me back, and I was on board ship, and I slipped on the rug in the bathroom. Oh no! And I broke my wrists, and it was so painful. They had to put me on. Medica medication, so I couldn't go out. So my daughter and my grandson went to Key West and I missed it. <laughs> when was this? This was about seven years ago. Oh, so sorry to hear that. And you haven't been able to get back since? No. Mm. My daughter said, maybe you wouldn't like it, Mom, because it isn't anything like you explained. You know, it was mm -hmm. so different. Okay. And where did you go after Key West? Washington, D.C. And what did you do there? Still office work there, just clerical work, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was Washington, D.C. like in the mid-40s? Beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful. And now I've been back there, and you, I wouldn't know the place now. Mm -hmm. And I went, I said, I can't believe this is Washington, D.C., you know. Did you make any friends uh, while you were in the service? Yes, yeah, several, but we never, we kept in touch for a while, but then it faded out, you know. You mm -hmm. get married and had responsibilities. Okay. But the camaraderie was marvelous there in the service. Okay, when did you uh, go to Washington? Uh, you joined the Navy, I believe, in June, uh, in 1944? I think that was the year, dear. I'm sorry I didn't That's bring right. the data mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. um, I was only in Washington, D.C. a short while when the war ended, you see. Mm -hmm. So we didn't get to do much there. Do you remember V.E. Day, May of 45? Yes. Uh -huh. What was that like? Oh, that was, they were singing on the streets and parading on the street. I was in Key West when that happened, now that I think of it. Ah. Yeah, we didn't get discharged right away. Mm -hmm. It was in Key West, I remember. Okay. And what did you do after the war? I got married, yeah. Okay. Uh, was your husband in the service? No. Well, was he in the service? No. I'm sorry. Okay. And how did you come to live in Natick or the vicinity? We were uh, hunting for good schools is what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. And that's why we came to Natick, because they had a good reputation. And when did you settle in Natick? Over 50 years ago. Let's see now. Yeah. Are we talking right after the war or early 1950s? No, my, my oldest daughter was eight years old when we moved here. Okay. And where were you before you moved to Natick? In Waltham. Okay. And tell us a little bit about Natick at that time. Well, it was lovely. It was a really a small town. Mm -hmm. And the schools were marvelous. Mm -hmm. Okay, you uh, what part of Natick uh, did you settle? West Natick. West Natick. So, 
Uh, did your children go to the West Natick School? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And what was that like? Uh, it's very wonderful. The teachers were marvelous. It was just a real small town, you know, mm -hmm. atmosphere. Okay. Lovely. And did you uh, work after the war or were you a housewife? No, I was a housewife. Mm -hmm. Did you work after your children grew up? Yes, I did. And what was your work? Let me think what I did then. I was hostessing at a Holiday Inn, that was it. What was the, uh, which Holiday Inn? Uh, here in uh, Natick or oh. Framingham, I forget which one. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to a little bit after the war. How, what were your feelings about coming home? Confused. You know, you miss the camaraderie of the people and it was kind of difficult getting used to it for a while, but mm -hmm. it passed. When you came home, did you discuss with your spouse or family and friends what you had done in the service? I'm sorry. Okay. Did you, uh, when you came home, did you discuss with your family and friends what you had done in the service? My sisters only. Just my sisters. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned a brother earlier on. Did he uh, mention anything about his war experiences? Oh, no. He, he was a hero, but he wouldn't talk about it. What did he do? He had many, many awards. Blue, uh, blah. Oh, what are they called? Purple Hearts? Or? Purple Heart was one, but there was others too. Mm -hmm. I can't remember them. But he knew, his wife told us, she showed us them, but he didn't know about it. Is, is he still living? No, he died. Oh. Did you join, uh, in, in, oh, excuse me. Did you join any unit of the military reserve after the war? No, I didn't, yeah. Uh, any veterans organizations? The Legion for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, how long were you with the Legion? Maybe two years. Was it the, which uh, Legion, in the Waltham? No, Natick. Oh, Natick, okay. But uh, what made you leave the Legion? Because they were good to the uh, ex-service people. They were kind to them. And they also gave scholarships for children. Mm -hmm. But uh, you're no longer a member of the Legion. No. Okay. Have you received any veterans' benefits, such as hospitalization, GI Bill, or insurance? No, not yet. Not yet. Did you, do you attend any reunions of... Uh, no, because they were all so far away, dear. Uh -huh. mm -mm. How important was it to you to serve in the military? Well, it was very important. Once I got there, I realized what our purpose was there, you know, to take the place of someone who had to go overseas, and I felt very mm -hmm. pleased that I could fill that in. Okay. Do you feel in some way it affected your life? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. It was a happy experience. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned before the interview some of the uh, stories from boot camp. If you could be so kind as to relate it on tape. You sang on the radio with the Ray Charles Choral Group. Tell us a bit about that. Oh, we were all delighted with that, dear. Yeah, you had, a, you had to uh, um, I can't think of the word. That's, That's the okay. trouble with old age. <laughs> But anyhow, you had to go in and sing for them to see if you were suited for it. And an audition, in other words. Hmm? An audition? Oh, that was the word I could <laughs> Okay. <laughs> now, this is Ray, uh, Ray Charles' choral group, not Ray Charles, the singer. The singer, no. Okay. Just to clarify on that. And the choral group, the Ray Charles' choral group, later went on to bigger and better things. Can you tell us a bit about that? Well, I wasn't there then. That was television. See, we were mm -hmm. radio. Yeah. And uh, we could have joined afterwards, but we all got involved. We got mm -hmm. married or whatever. So right. he went on to bigger and better things, and he mm -hmm. was a fine man. Yeah. And how long were you um, singing with the Ray Charles Choral Group? I think it was two months, dear, that's all. Mm -hmm. It was, was just during, during boot camp, okay. you see. Do you still sing, or? No. <laughs> <laughs> and you also, I understand uh, your group also performed comedy skits. Can you tell us just about that? Just that one, one, just the one time, dear, that's all. And it was a, mm -hmm. 
like uh, mostly ad lib, you know, as you went along, you created your own humor to the, put the... the kind of like improv. Uh, that's it. Mm. All right. Let's go, uh, let's flash forward a little bit to um, last May of 2010, the Women's or Veterans uh, Celebration at the Morris Institute Library. How did you hear about that? They sent us an invitation, dear. Mm -hmm. See, prior to that, they had our pictures in the library. Mm -hmm. And so then they sent us an invitation. And this would be a very and good I time thought, to have the folks. I thought it was lovely that uh, mm -hmm. they did that for us, you know. It was very pleasant. Mm -hmm. And if you could show to the camera oh. what you looked like way back <laughs> when. And you made a comment be just before the interview about people coming up to you saying, you served in the war? And you don't look like that? Oh, yes, you don't look like, that doesn't look like you. <laughs> I said that was 60 odd years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we had, uh, there were, of course, several uh, parts to the celebration, including uh, comments and the slideshow. What did you think about all that? I was duly impressed, really. It was mm -hmm. just marvelous. And then I met the woman who was the guest speaker. Mm -hmm. She was a an officer, I think. In yes, the, that would have been uh, Lieutenant Colonel Otto from Natick Labs. Huh. And she was very pleasant, very personable. Mm -hmm. Can I put this down? Oh, bit? yes, you may. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Uh -huh. So what do you think about uh, women veterans and, or, all, or women serving in the military now? I don't believe in them going overseas, no. Mm -hmm. not, even, not for combat or anything? No. Mm -hmm. During World War II, the only women who went over were nurses. Well, I could understand that, you know, well enough. But combat, no, I just can't see it. Did any of your children or grandchildren consider joining the military? No, my daughter thought for a little while she would go in the Air Force, but then she said, no, I changed my mind. And, <clears throat> excuse me, any um, thoughts? that you want to relate to our, the viewing audience who will be seeing this? Well, I don't know what I can say. I was just gonna say, I would say for anyone who wanted to go in the service, women, they should go in though. It's a lovely experience, but not to go overseas. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any um, memorable characters or mem other memorable experiences from well, we met many movie stars because they came to entertain us. You see, Dick Powell stood out in my mind because he was so gracious. Mm -hmm. um, Carol, not Carol Lombard, Carol. Okay, give me, maybe she I can help you out here. <laughs> Carol she, Landis? Landis, that's the one. Okay. <laughs> and was this while you were down in Key West? Or? No, in boot camp. In yeah, boot camp. In New York. Uh, any any memory uh, anything that stands out from uh, those shows? No, they can't. Dick did come to us and ask us for a few uh, naval uh, expressions, you know. Mm -hmm. and that's and they put that in their skit. Mm -hmm. And anything else uh, that? Nothing exciting, dear. No. <laughs> So. Well, as far as the personnel you helped uh, find housing for, did, were you ever in contact, further contact with any of them? The people that I found? Oh, mm -hmm. No, because I worked to another, uh, my office, and I relayed all the messages to them. Mm -hmm. The paperwork went to them. Okay. I'll have, I have one of the experiences. Mm -hmm. Black lady was cleaning our office, and I had a poem on my desk. And she said, Kit, may I take that and have a copy of it? And I said, surely. So she came in Monday and she said, thank you so much. My minister made a sermon based on that poem. Well, that's she wonderful. was so delighted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Coming from, um, did you, ex I'll just bring this up very quickly. Did you experience um, segregation when you were down in Key West or in Washington, D.C.? Just DC? the people from Texas. They were so biased. We had a lovely black girl. I shouldn't say black, I don't know what they call her right. today, but mm -hmm. she was so lovely. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the girl from Texas came in and saw her, oh, my God, we, we were all heartbroken the way she treated that girl. Mm -hmm. 
And I said, I never knew the Texans were that prejudiced. And they said, oh yeah, they are. And this was when you were stationed down in Key West? No, that was in New York at boot camp. Really? At boot camp. Wow. Did you have any other experiences with that? Or? No, we, we kept going with the girl and, mm -hmm. you know, taking her out with us and all, and the other girl ignored us, and well, we weren't sorry for that at all. Mm. And is there anything else you'd like to add? No, dear, I really don't have a very good memory. I'm That's sorry. So, <laughs> That's all right. Well, Kit Simons, we thank you for coming in and being a part of the Veter Native Veterans Oral History Project and your participation. Thank you so thank much. You. It was my pleasure, mm -hmm. dear. Sorry my memory's so bad. But. That's okay. <laughs>